Welcome to Hemi High, where dinos of all zygosities are bestowed with scholastic wisdom and universal truths. Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. It's pretty much all canoodling and teenage angst from here on out. And it looks like we beamed down during the homecoming game, just in time for the halftime show. At Hemi High, we'll be learning about a pair of chromosomes unlike any other in the genome, the sex chromosomes. To figure out what makes these chromosomes so special, let's briefly review the autosomal chromosomes. Autosomal chromosomes are all the chromosomes except for X and Y. Diploid organisms have two copies of every autosomal chromosome, one from each parent. Together, these two copies make a homologous pair. On the other hand, sex chromosomes don't always come in homologous pairs. Humans have two types of sex chromosomes, the X and Y chromosome. As you may know, most genetic females have two X chromosomes, which are homologous. However, most genetic males have one X and one Y chromosome, so they're hemizygous. Now, take a look at Hemihi's banner. It has an X and Y-shaped vine to help you remember the sex chromosomes, which carry sex-linked genes. Note that in this sketch, we'll be using she-her pronouns to refer to individuals with two X chromosomes and he-his pronouns to refer to individuals with an X and a Y. These pronouns reflect gender identity, which does not always align with the sex chromosomes a person inherits. However, for the purposes of this sketch, they're helpful in differentiating important symbols. Now, the X and Y chromosomes are very different in structure and function. The X chromosome is about the same size as an autosomal chromosome, and it carries many genes. On the other hand, the Y chromosome is smaller and carries fewer genes than all the other chromosomes. Notice that the X-shaped vine on Hemihi's banner has many flowers, while the Y-shaped vine only has one. This represents the difference in the amount of genetic material carried on each sex chromosome. Now let's watch these sex chromosomes in action. You might be familiar with using Punnett squares to predict the autosomal genotypes of the offspring produced when two individuals mate. Well, guess what? They can also be used to predict genotypes at sex-linked genes. We've represented sex-linked crosses with these dinos who snuck away to have a, a, a romantic kiss. Jeez, what did you think I was gonna say? Now, how do you set up a sex-linked Punnett square? Well, all the gametes of an XX parent carry an X chromosome. If the XX parent in a given cross is heterozygous for a sex-linked gene, half of her gametes will carry one allele and the other half will carry a different allele. Notice the X big A and X little a genotype on that dino shirt? That represents the XX parent's genotype. The X just tells us we're examining a gene on the X chromosome. The A's tell us whether the gene we're interested in has a dominant or recessive allele on each of her chromosomes. So, when setting up a Punnett square, the rows will each have an X with the allele that gamete contains abbreviated with the superscript above it. It looks a lot like an autosomal Punnett square, right? Just a different notation. Now, the XY parent's genotype is where things get a little trickier. Half of an XY parent's gametes will carry an X chromosome, which does carry the A gene, but the other half have a Y, which does not carry the A gene. See how the dinosaur on the right has the genotype X big A Y? You can also think of that as X big A blank, since he's only got one copy of the A gene. So the first column of his gametes has his one X chromosome with the allele annotated in the same way it is on XX gametes. However, the other half of his gametes will contain a Y. Since the Y won't have a copy of the gene of interest, we'll just write a Y by itself in the second column with no letter up top. As we fill in the boxes, we can see that half of the offspring genotypes have two X chromosomes, so they're genetic females. They can be homozygous or heterozygous for the gene of interest. Like autosomal genes, their phenotype will be determined by the typical patterns of dominance. The other half of the offspring have one X and one Y. They're genetic males. Since they only have one gene copy, their phenotype will be dictated by whichever allele they inherit on their X chromosome. That means they can show a recessive phenotype with just one allele copy. Abnormalities of genes located on sex chromosomes can lead to sex-linked disorders. Since there are so many more genes on the X chromosome than on the Y, the vast majority of sex-linked disorders arise from mutations of genes on X. These are called X-linked disorders. Only XX heterozygotes can be carriers of recessive X-linked disorders. 
These individuals will not show symptoms of the disorder since it will be masked by a copy of the dominant allele. Check out this dinosaur jamming out even though she's carrying around a broken drum. Good thing she brought a backup. She represents a carrier, and the broken drum represents a recessive allele for an X-linked disorder. Just listening to this dino's sick beats, you'd never know there was a problem with one of her drums. If a carrier reproduces with an unaffected XY individual, meaning he carries a dominant allele on his X chromosome, none of their XX offspring will show the disordered phenotype since they'll all get a dominant allele from him. But what happens when a carrier has XY offspring? In general, XY individuals are more prone to inheriting recessive X-linked disorders because they only get one X chromosome, which comes from their XX parent. This means that if they inherit an allele for an X-linked disorder, they will always show the diseased phenotype since they don't have the option of masking it with a dominant allele copy. Kind of like this dinosaur with a single broken drum who can't play a beat. Seems like band supplies are not the top priority in Hemihai's budget. In contrast to recessive X-linked disorders, which are usually all or nothing, dose-dependent genetic disorders vary in severity based on how many functional versus disordered gene copies an individual has. XX individuals who are heterozygous for a dose-dependent X-linked disorder are only able to produce functional gene products from half of their X chromosomes that don't carry the disordered allele. They'll make less good protein than they would with two functional gene copies so they'll likely show some symptoms of the disorder. But since they're also making some functional protein in the other half of their cells, their symptoms tend to not be too severe. Sort of like this dinosaur who has one broken and one functional bell on her sousaphone. She is a little off key on the left bell, but luckily she's still hitting her notes on the right. Not ideal, but we won't cut her just yet. Now check out her bandmate to the right. He doesn't have a backup bell, and the result is even worse than my third grade recorder recital. This unlucky dino represents an XY individual with a dose-dependent X-linked disorder. Unfortunately, XY individuals don't have backup chromosomes for dose-dependent sex-linked disorders, just like that dino doesn't have a backup sousaphone bell. XY individuals with a disordered allele on X will only produce dysfunctional protein and thus will show more severe symptoms of the disorder. Note that XX individuals can show symptoms this severe if they inherit a disordered X chromosome from their mom and dad, but generally, that's not very likely. Okay, I would happily trade space travel to time travel back to eight minutes ago when I never heard a teenage dinosaur playing a broken sousaphone. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. The X and Y chromosomes are known as the sex chromosomes, and they carry sex-linked genes. The X chromosome carries many more of these genes than the Y chromosome. XX parents contribute one of their two X chromosomes to each of their egg cells. XY parents contribute either an X chromosome or a Y chromosome to each sperm cell. This difference in gamete genotype is important to remember when setting up a Punnett square to examine a sex-linked cross. Harmful mutations to the X chromosome, aka X-linked disorders, tend to affect XX and XY individuals differently. XX individuals can be carriers of recessive X-linked disorders, but they're less likely to show a disordered phenotype since they'd need to inherit the disorder from both parents. Since XY individuals only need to inherit one recessive allele to show the disorder, they're more likely to be affected. Similarly, XY individuals typically show more severe symptoms of X-linked dose-dependent disorders since they don't have a backup X chromosome to produce functional gene products. Well, we've learned that the arts are woefully underfunded in the Jurassicome public school system. But these teens sure have spirit, I'll give them that. Now, let's get out of here before the symbols come out.